Copilot, Devon, ChatGPT, Gemini. Wow, how has this generative AI changed my role as a software engineer? There has been so many new startups revolving around the generative AI hype train, and many products, tools are made available nowadays that improves engineering efficiencies. So as a software engineer myself, how have I noticed my day-to-day -day has changed since these new tools? At my company, I noticed the internal tools are getting better and smarter with generative AI integrations. Because many of the big companies, they don't want to use co-pilots, especially when it's owned by another big company because, you know, they don't want to give free access to our code base. So they develop something internally for their own software engineers. And for me, I use the internal version of ChatGPT, Copilot, extensively. Like now, there are time periods where I feel like they should have always been there. Like I don't remember what it was like before they existed. For example, the VS Code integration, auto code completions, like they recommend, oh, I start typing. This is what you probably want to type. You can code complete. If I'm writing documentations, I comment above. They kind of know what I was doing. So they help me comment my code, write documentations. And a lot of the departments that focus on this internal tooling has become a top priority at my company. And the focusing on maybe even building a new product revolving around this is also the company priority. So I definitely notice a lot of people are trying to get into this organization because it's like the one that the company wants to focus on the most. Of course, it comes with risk as well because we all know what happened during the pandemic. There were a lot of tools or new products that was very popular, but it didn't end up making enough money once the people's pattern habit went back. So I'm not sure if Gen AI will repeat some of the same things, but it's definitely a risk that we can't deny. So given all that, how has my day-to-day -day changed as a full stack software engineer? I feel like overall, I definitely has taken more of a backseat role. I still write a lot of code. I build feature from end to end. So what I used to do is, okay, this feature looks very similar to something that we already have. Let me find that code. If I remember it, I will still look for it. But I can also open the internal version of ChatGPT or BARD and just quickly ask them, hey, let's say I'm building a front-end component. I describe, I want to put an image to the left and then I want to put some text to the right side. Can you just help me create a wrapper class? Boom, 10 seconds later. I don't even need to look for anything. I find exactly what they return to me. Of course, I had to specify, okay, let's say I'm using JavaScript. I'm using React. Please write it in that syntax. If I'm using React Native, please write it in that syntax. And then I copy and paste it. So I think this is the difference between a good software engineer versus someone who's just starting off. It's the fact that when I'm looking at their code, I'm just not, I'm not blindly just copying and pasting it. I'm still looking to see if it makes sense. And based on the output, I'm like, oh, they did something wrong. It's probably because I didn't describe it well enough. So I say, thank you so much for doing this, but I also want to make the padding something. Can you also add me some styling? Let's say I'm also using some sort of use state hooks or whatsoever. Like I can customize it a little bit in the ChatGPT chat integration part. The goal for me here is to just get as much boilerplate out of the way as possible. And I can expand and grow the code afterwards. So this is typically what I do. I first copy the component at the output and then I try to hook it up to my existing system and see does it actually show up. And once it show up, I'm like, okay, let's focus on the API portion. Like how do I want to handle the backend side? And now a lot of times, many people aren't surprised. Like when you write a lot of APIs, microservices or whatsoever, a lot of boilerplate. Back then, it's probably just like find something similar, copy and paste. We can do the same, especially if they already know your internal code base so well. I can just be like, okay, I already have this. Can you reference it, but make it this. It's very easy. They make it for me and then I just copy paste. And once I do that, I just need to modify and make sure everything looks correct. No synthetic errors, variable naming is good and nothing like funky and th that's pretty much playing the TL role every single time now. 
I'm watching someone else write me some code and then I'm trying to see if it's reasonable. And now it comes the very interesting part. Because it speed up my process so much, nowadays I focus more on UX and UI. How does this product feel? What can I do to make it more, like, you know, make more sense if I'm a user facing product? Does the product make sense? If I have a button on the screen, where is the best location to do it? How do I want to handle it? There's a lot more designing and edge case thinking nowadays that's involved in this development process because maybe before your brain you are more drained by the time you finish writing code and you're already really tired so you're not really thinking as deep about some of these edge cases or scenarios that the user might do that it doesn't cover so the question now becomes because you can generate these things so much faster and you might not have spent a lot of brain energy now you can focus more on what improves the user experiences and at least from a software engineering perspective i have seen that's the shift that i am experiencing and one thing that we all hate <laughs> maybe some people don't hate it's like time consuming is writing tests and a lot of times writing tests pretty much just protects like especially for unit tests it just makes sure the function you are creating is not doing something weird it's doing exactly what you expect and one thing I love the most about this GPT tool is the fact that I can copy and paste the function and say, hey, write me a just the front testing framework, let's say. Let, write me some just test code. And then I look at it and be like, okay, this looks uh, kind of reasonable. But do like I, I, I expand it, for example. If I don't like how they are writing each test scenarios like 10 times, I say like, hey, you see this pattern? Can you make a for loop? Can you make the test like one test instead and then reference some sort of map set instead? So I will customize it. And then I look at the test and be like, is it testing some of the edge cases? It makes testing so much easier to write. Like it just makes this development process so much smoother. Like now I don't complain. I'm like, I remember before I'm like, okay, test is coming up in the next diff. Please don't block me on this. Like I'm gonna write the test next time but not right now. I want to get this feature to the finish line. Like I tested manually. We have a QA testing team. I'm sure I can write the test maybe a week later, right? So now I just do it right away because it's so much faster. It speeds up the process by tenfold even. Like it's just such a lifesaver. But given all of this, now the question becomes, do I feel future-proofed? Because while it's fun, like I'm being very productive, do I feel like I'm at risk, like these AI tools are getting smarter that I soon don't need to do my job? I think nowadays it becomes a lot trickier, like continuous learning is still very important. And I have taken more of an architectural design aspect, trying to design the best code. Because depending on how you structure your question, your prompt, the code that it returns can vary a lot. And depending on how experienced you are, the quality bar may also be very different. Because based on my observations, sometimes the code is still not perfect. The pattern is not great, it's very like redundant, it writes a lot of stuff not very suitable for the current code base, for example. It's still lacking some of this, but it is getting a lot better every single time I use it. A month ago, like the code completion was like completely off, but now the code completion is pretty accurate. So I do see a fast growth in this field. That means there are a lot of opportunities for AI and machine learning researchers, like engineers who specialize in this to help create models, help create user aspect products. That's why it's a huge hiring focus right now. So I would say this is definitely the future. Like we need these products. It will happen no matter what. I have also noticed like because of the efficiency boost, like expectation stress level also has gone up you feel like you can do more but you know like now in a sprint before you might be able to do one task now it's like two or three sure you can do it faster but somehow you still feel more drained because like you are doing a lot of context switching like you are not taking a step at a time like i guess picking up the momentum the speed you're jumping straight in so you're always running at a very high caliber and it feels like a lot easier to feel burned out because like you have all these tools you, you hear about your job might be get replaced like 
maybe the team doesn't need as many software engineers nowadays. People can become so much more efficient. Like these are definitely valid concerns that people may have. But as a software engineer myself, right now, all these tools that I use internally, at least, are nowhere near the quality of ours that I would expect uh, another software engineer can do. It definitely helped improve my efficiency and make my life so much easier and change the dynamic of how I approach coding. Now, I spend a lot of time thinking about the data model, thinking about looking at the UI. I'm like, okay, what should the backend look like? What's the data model I want to use? How do I describe it? I'm like a poet, like I'm writing descriptions, like how to best describe it to help ChatGPT generate the type of stuff I need. Of course, some of the modeling stuff, I still write it myself, but a lot of boilerplate, I can just jump straight in. Like I recognize the pattern and it's not perfect. I can tweak it. At least it's something that helped me speed up a lot. So yeah, as a software engineer, I definitely feel more powerful, feel like I can have bigger responsibilities and leverage more of these tools. And overall, I feel very positive. And I know as a software engineer, now it's more than ever. What is the difference between a good software engineer versus a great one? It's those that might consider the future. You might have to focus on what's important right now versus what's important down the line. Will the product scale? How quickly will this code become useless if it scales 10 times, 100 times? These are really valid questions that now you have to consider. And I think you have more time to consider these things. So overall, yeah, like my day to day has changed dramatically since generative AI. So yeah, guys, I hope this video was insightful. I kind of touched a little bit on how generative AI changed my role as a software engineer. The timing, the future is definitely more exciting than ever. And I think right now it's a very good time to be a software engineer because you're not fully replaced yet. You can use these tools to better help yourself grow to that better software engineering status. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.